Let's talk about application of inscribed angles. What we have here is a circle and four squares. The area of the yellow square is 400 square units. The area of this green square is 100 square units. And the area of this orange square is 64 square units. We do not know what is the area of this red square. Our goal is to find the area of this circle. In order to solve this problem, let's recall our inscribed angle theorem. When we have this circle with center at point O and draw this chord AB and chord AC in such a way that their point of intersection, point B, is on the circle, then the angle form, angle ABC, is an example of an inscribed angle. And the inscribed angle theorem says that the measure of this inscribed angle is one half the measure of the central angle AOC. In words, the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. In our case, the measure of the intercepted arc AC is equal to the measure of the central angle AOC. And corollary to this inscribed angle theorem, when we have a case where we have two or more inscribed angles with the same intercepted arc, for example, in this figure, we have this inscribed angle ADC and another inscribed angle ABC and another inscribed angle AFC. All of them have this common intercepted arc AC. Then our conclusion is angle ADC is congruent to angle ABC, congruent to angle AFC, because all of these three inscribed angles are subtended by the same arc AC. We are going to apply these theorems in order to solve our problem for today. So let's go back to our problem. One strategy in order to answer a problem like this is to redraw our figure in such a way that we are going to filter out information that are not important. So let's begin by looking at this segment AD, which is a chord of the circle. Since the yellow square is 400 square units, then we'll be able to find what is the length of the side of this yellow square. The length of the side is the square root of 400, which is 20. Similarly, since the area of this orange square is 64, then we'll be able to know what is the length of the side. The length of the side is the square root of 64, which is 8. We need those information, and in order to have some clarity of our figure, let's gather this important information in this circle at the right. So we now have this length of 20 units here, and another length of 8 units. And together, we now say that the length of segment AD is equal to 28 units. Then let's look at this chord connecting point B to point C to another point on this circle. Since this green square is 100 square units, then we know that the length of segment BC would be the square root of 100, which is 10. So we now have this length of segment BC to be 10 units. Next, let's connect point B and point A in order to form this right triangle, triangle B, C, A. And since the triangle is right triangle, and we know that the length of side BC is 10 units, and the length of side AC is 8 units, then we'll be able to compute what is the length of this hypotenuse BA. We can compute this using the Pythagorean theorem. So the length of side BA now is equal to the square root of 10 squared, which is the length of side BC squared, and 8 squared, which is also the length of side AC squared. 
which can be simplified as the square root of 164 and further simplified as 2 square root of 41. So the length of side BA, therefore, is 2 square root of 41. Next, let's connect point B and D in order to form this red right triangle, triangle B, C, D. In this red right triangle, we know that the length of side BC is 10 units and the length of side CD is 20 units. Therefore, we will be able to compute what is the length of the hypotenuse BD using Pythagorean theorem again. So here is our computation. The length of side BD is equal to the square root of this side, which has a measure of 20 units, so we have 20 squared, and this other side, which has a length of 10 units, so we have here 10 squared, which is equal to the square root of 500, or simplified as 10 square root of 5. Then, let's connect point B and point E in such a way that this chord passes through the center, and let's label the center as point O, and then connect point D to point E in order to form this orange triangle. To highlight the triangle, let's color the triangle red. Now, what do we know about this red triangle? Since segment BE passes through the center, then this segment BE is the longest chord or a diameter of circle O. This means that our circle is now divided into two semicircle. Its half of the circle measures 180 degrees. And since angle BDE is an inscribed angle, then the measure of this angle is one half the measure of this semicircle. And so one half of 180 degrees is 90 degrees. And so by inscribed angle theorem, we can now therefore say that this angle, angle B, DE is a right angle. And so, we also have here a right triangle BDE. Another thing to notice is when you have this triangle BAD, with respect to this angle, angle BAD, its intercepted arc is arc BD. Also, with respect to angle BE, D, the intercepted arc of this angle also is arc BD. Since both these angles, angle BAD and angle BED, intercepted the same arc BD, then our conclusion is that these two angles are congruent from the corollary of the inscribed angle theorem. And so, we are now ready to compare triangle BAD and triangle BED by noting some of those congruent angles. So let's summarize what we know now. So consider triangle ACB and triangle EDB. We know that angle ACB is congruent to angle EDB because all right angles are congruent. Triangle ACB is a right angle. Triangle EDB is also a right angle. Next, we know that angle BAC, angle BAC, this angle, and angle BED, this angle, are also congruent because both these angles intercepted the same arc, arc BD. So from the corollary to the inscribed angle theorem, then angle BAC is congruent to angle BED. Next, we can compute that angle ABC is congruent to angle EBD. Angle ABC is this angle, and angle EBD, EBD is this angle. We can show that these two angles are congruent because we know that the sum of the interior angles a bit triangle is 180 degrees. So if we know that the two angles of one triangle are congruent to the other two angles of another triangle, then 
subtracting the sum of those two angles from 180 degrees will result to these two congruent angles. At this point, we have just shown that the three angles of these two triangles, triangle ACB and triangle EDB, are all congruent. And so from these three statements, we can conclude that triangle ACB and triangle EDB are similar triangles. And when two triangles are similar, then their corresponding parts are proportional. And so we can now form this proportion. The ratio of side BC to side BA is equal to the ratio of the corresponding parts side BD to side B. Notice that both AB and EB are the hypotenuse of the respective triangles. And BC and BD are the corresponding legs of these two similar right triangles. But we know that the measure of side BC is 10 units, and we know that the measure of side BA is 2 square root of 41, and the measure of side BD is 10 square root of 5. All of these measurements were computed from our previous slides, but we do not know what is the measure of side EB. And side EB is a diameter of our circle O. Computing now for the measure of side EB, we now have the measure of segment EB equals 2 square root of 205. And take note that this 2 square root of 205 is now the length of the diameter. And when we know the length of the diameter, we just divide this by 2 to get the measure of the radius. And so our radius, therefore, is 2 square root of 205 divided by 2, which is equal to square root of 205. And once we know what's the radius, it is now easy to compute for the area of the circle because the area of the circle is pi radius squared, where our radius is square root of 205. And simplifying, the area is 205 pi. So therefore, our final answer is the area of the circle is 205 times pi. In decimal, that is approximately 644 square units. So thank you, thank you very much, and we hope to see you again in our next video.